Okay, let's continue. Since the Society for Propagating the Gospel in Foreign Parts already noticed in 1745 established a school in Charleston, South Carolina under the direction of Commiss Commissary Garden, it flourished greatly and seemed to answer their utmost wishes. It had at one time 60 scholars and sent forth annually about 20 young Negroes well instructed in the English language and the Christian faith. This school was established in St. Philip's Church and some of its scholars were living in 1822 of orderly and decent characters, P.B. Meade and Dr. Dolco. The year 1747 was marked in the colony of Georgia by the authorization, authorized in introduction of slaves. 23 representatives from the different districts met in Savannah, and after appointing Major Horton president, they entered into sundry resolutions, the substance of which was that the owners of slaves should educate the young and use every possible means of making religious impressions upon the minds of the aged, and that all acts of inhumanity should be punished by the civil authority. 1764, the Reverend Ezra Stiles, D period, D period, afterwards president of Yale College and Dr. Samuel Hopkins undertook the education of two apparently promised Negroes with a view to the ministry, but it was finally a failure, Dr. Pulmer's report. 1770, while Dr. Stiles was pastor in Newport, R period, I period, there were many African slaves in that town of 80 chem communicants in his church in that town, seven were Negroes. These occasionally met by his direction for religious improvement in his study. Methodism was introduced into this country in New York, 1766, and the first missionaries were sent out by Mr. Wesley in 1769. One of these Mr. Fillmore, or Pillmore, in a letter to Mr. Wesley from New York in 1770 says, the number of blacks that attend the preaching affects me much. The first regular conference was held in Philadelphia, 1773. Number of ministers, 10, of, and of members, 1,160. From this year to 1776, there was a great revival of religion in Virginia under the preaching of the Methodists in connection with Reverend Mr. Jarrett of the Episcopal, Episcopal Church, which spread through 14 counties in Virginia and two in North Carolina. One letter states, the chapel was full of white and black. Another hundreds of Negroes were among them with tears streaming down their faces at Rayanoke and other remarks. In general, the white people were within the chapel and the black people without. 1780. At the 8th conference in Baltimore, the following question appeared in the minutes. Question 25. Ought not the assistant to meet the colored people himself and appoint as helpers in his absence proper white persons and not suffer them to stay late and meet by themselves? Answer, yes. Under the preaching of Mr. Gerritson in Maryland, hundreds both white and black expressed their love of Jesus. 1786. The first return of colored members distinct from white occurs in the minutes of this year, and then yearly afterwards. 
white, 18,791 colored, 1,890. It will be perceived from the above, says Dr. Baines, in his history of the Methodist Episcopal Church, that a considerable number of colored persons had been received into the church and was so returned in the minutes of conference. Hence, it appears that at an early period of the Methodist ministry in this country, it had turned its attention to this part of the population. Mr. Rankin, writing on the general state of Methodism in the colonies at the commencement of hostilities, observes in May 1777, we had 40 preachers in the different circuits and about 7,000 members in the society, besides many hundreds of Negroes who were convinced of sin, and many of them happy in the love of God. Life of Coke, page 53. In the year 1786, the following case of conscience was overturned from Donegal Presbytery in the Synod of New York and Philadelphia, namely, whether Christian masters or mistresses ought to, in duty to have such children baptized as are under their care, through born, though born of parents, not in the communion of any Christian church. Upon this overture, the Synod are of opinion that Christian masters and mistresses whose religious profession and conduct are such as to give them a right to the ordinance of baptism for their own children may and ought to dedicate the children of their household to God. In that ordinance, when they have no scruples, scruple of conscience to the contrary. In my end period, page 4, 13, an MIM period of gentle assembly, general assembly, page 97. And on the next page, 414, it was overturned whether Christian slaves having children at the entire direction of unchristian masters and not having it in their power to instruct them in religion are bound to have them baptized and whether a gospel minister in this predicate pre predicament ought to baptize them. The Synod determined the question in the affirmative. 1787, the minutes of the Met Methodist Conference for this year furnished the following question and answer in the indicative of continued interest in the colored population. Question 17. What direction shall, be, shall we give for the promotion of the spiritual welfare of the colored people? Answer. We concur, we conjure all our ministers and preachers by the love of God and the salvation of souls and do require them by all the authority that is invested in us to leave nothing undone for the spiritual benefit and salvation of them within their respective circuits or districts, and for this purpose to embrace every opportunity of inquiring into the state of their souls and to unite in society those who appear to have a real desire of fleeing from the wrath to come, to meet such in class, and to exercise the whole Methodist discipline among them. Number of colored members, 3,893. 1790. Again, question. What can be done in order to instruct poor children, white and black, to read? Answer. Let us labor as the heart and soul of one man to establish Sunday schools in or near the place of public worship. Let persons be appointed by the bishops, elders, deacons, or preachers to teach great gratis 
all that will attend and have a capacity to learn from 6 o'clock in the morning till 10 and then 2 p.m. till 6 where it does not interfere with public worship the council shall compile a proper school book to teach them learning and piety the experiment was made but it proved unsuccessful and was discontinued number of colored members this year 11,000 682. The Methodist is the only denomination which has preserved returns of the number of colored members in its connection. I find it impossible to make any estimate of the number in connection with the other denominations. The Methodists met with more success during this period in the middle and southern states than in the northern. And as they paid particular attention to the Negroes, large numbers were brought under their influence. The first Baptist church in this country was founded in Providence R.I. by Roger Williams in 1639 nearly 100 years after the settlement of America. Only 17 Baptist churches had arisen in it. The Baptist Church in Charleston, South Carolina was founded in 1690. The denomination advanced slowly through the Middle and Southern states and in 1790 it had churches in all of them, in them all. Revivals of religion were enjoyed, particularly one in Virginia, which commenced in 1785 and continued until 1791 or 1792. Thousands were converted and baptized, besides many who joined the Methodist and Presbyterian. A large number of Negroes were admitted to the Baptist churches during the seasons of revival, as well as on ordinary occasions. They were, however, not gathered into churches distinct, distinct from the white south of Pennsylvania except in Georgia. Brief notices of churches composed exclusively of Negroes will be given in the second period of this sketch. Before the revolution, the Negroes in Virginia attended in crowds the Episcopal Church there being no other denomination of Christians of consequences in the state. But upon the introduction of other denominations, they went off to them. Old Robert Carter, or Consular or King Carter, as he was commonly called, among the richest men in the state, owning some 700 or 800 slaves, and large tracts of land, built Christ's Church in Lancaster County, Virginia, and reserved one-fourth for his servants and tenants. He was himself baptized and afterwards emancipated a large number of his Negroes and living 14 or 15 years of Baptist, embraced and died in the faith of Swedenborg. Swedenborg. The independence of the American colonies was acknowledged and peace established in 1783. The Articles of Confederation of 1778 were superseded by our present Constitution in 1787, from the ratification of which to the present time our country has been rapidly advancing in prosperity. From the beginning of our controversies with the mother country to the breaking out of the Revolutionary War, throughout the period of that arduous struggle and from its close, throughout the period of national exaltation or exhaustion, loss of public credit, derangement in trade, political excitements, and conflicting opinions to the ratification of the Constitution, a 
period of near 20 years, the colony suffered immeasurably in a moral, moral and religious point of view. And the notices during this period of the state of the churches and of the progress of the gospel are gloomy, and some of them of the gloomiest character. Of course, the Negroes suffered in common with the rest of the population. A few remarks suggested by the facts embraced in this first period of our sketch shall bring it to a conclusion. The religion condition of the colonies up to the period of the revolution taken on the whole was not one remarkable for its prosperity. Notwithstanding, there had been some revivals of religion. The New England colonies were in respect to a supply of ministries or ministers and religious privileges and improvement beyond all the rest. But the whole country was in a forming state, but recently settled, every year receiving fresh colonists from abroad and the other settlers pushing their way into new and unexplored re regions while repeated wars with the Indians and wars with the French, the Dutch, and the Spaniards drew different portions into protracted, distressing, and injurious commotions. Agriculture, commerce, manufactures, and the arts were but in this infamy, were but in their infamy and the general conduct of the mother country in regard to the government of the colonies and the policy to be pursued towards them was wretched, sometimes contradictory, frequently oppressive and injurious, and contrary to the wishes of the colonists. Just a moment. 